Hey, welcome back to Living in Minnesota. My name is Joe Carmack, and it's time for your Twin Cities real estate market update. This is for November 2022. And shout out to my new friend, Narim, who emailed me and said, hey, where's our market update for last month? We actually moved our whole family. We bought our new house, moved the family of six, had to rewire all the electrical, and we threw a massive client holiday party for 90 people. So it's been very busy, and I appreciate your patience. This month, I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I've got my, my ho-ho mocha here, and we're going to be talking about seasonality. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to start you off with our month supply of inventory. On this graph, the lower we are, the more of a seller's market we're in. The higher we are, the more of a balanced or buyer's market we would be in. And the way they collect this data is essentially that um, the number of new listings that come on the market versus the number of them that sell. But the problem is with seasonality in Minnesota like it is, uh, there's a lot more listings going on the market in the summer a lot fewer in the winter. And so those listings over the summer that didn't sell are left, giving us more supply. And then the buyers pull out sooner. So then it shifts that into actually being a much more buyer favored market during the winter months. So November, December, easily my favorite months for buyers. But then, you know, April, May, June are gonna be the best for sellers. So don't let this graph skew you. That's the reality. If you're only buying, winter is best. If you're only selling, summer is best. And if you're doing both, it kind of doesn't matter because it'll be a wash. But in any case, towards the end of the summer, September, October is when we will see this metric peak, okay? So that would be technically, they're calling it more of a balanced market. And then along that time, pretty much always by September or October is when we see this start to fall, okay? What we saw this year was actually the exact opposite. So I'm giving you the last two months. We ended with 1.8 months in August. And then we went up to two for September and October, which was very unusual um, in a normal market that definitely would have gone down. So this right here is the main thing that I can point to to say, yes, we are shifting. Our market, fortunately, um, is starting to move. The reality is if you're, if you're new to the real estate game, you're just starting to think about buying a house or selling. We've been like praying that this would start to happen from maybe three or four years ago. And we would see some of these numbers start to shift and we're like, oh great, here we go. It's finally gonna ease up a little bit. It's not gonna be such a crazy busy hot market. It's not gonna be so competitive and exhausting for buyers, right? I think we are finally there. I mean, I've said it like four times, I think now, um, but we, we think we're there. Um, we're seeing interest rates propelling us a little bit to becoming more of a balanced market. Uh, I mean, even sellers don't like the market they're in because if you're selling your home in the perfect seller's market, well, then you gotta go buy something else and that sucks. And so um, we're all cheering for this number to keep going up. Um, but like I said, we gotta look at seasonality. So this is just looking at the past three years. You can see right here and we're just looking at our month to month changes. So why don't we shift this to being a rolling 12 month average? Cause we gotta see how we're trending really compared to last year. And then why don't I pull this out to as far as I can go? So, uh, one of the questions that I get all the time is, is the market crashing? Has the market crashed? Is it completely shifted or we're in a completely different market? The reality is no. Again, if I pull out here, this is where you can see we should be between four and six months to be a balanced market. Depends on who you ask. Some people will say a solid six months is the number, but generally in that range, we're going to be balanced. We're incredibly low. And the idea that we're crashing, I mean, just look at this, right? This was the early 08, you know, boom and bust, right? This is kind of the whole last recession. Then things kept changing and rates and everything else changed, right? But look at this one right here. When this market shifted back in 2014, it made a pretty significant, pretty quick uptick. It then went towards being more of a seller's market. We saw a little correction. Like I said, a few years ago, this was when we were really thinking, okay, great. We're going to finally get to being more balanced. And then we didn't, and then COVID happened. And then that right here pushed us into even more of a seller's market. So as you can see here, this little curve up that we're experiencing is great. It's welcomed and it's much needed, but it's not like the sky is falling and all of a sudden everything's completely shifted and everything's just going to hell in a handbasket or something. Uh, that's not their market. The market is shifting. We are seeing it correcting and we'd love to see this number. I want this number to keep going up. I hope that every month I do these. Um, I can tell you great news. Our month supply is up. So that's answering whether or not we're in a buyer's market. Then the next thing I hear about is how long do homes take to sell? Because I'm seeing homes sitting on the market for quite a long time. So let's switch over and we'll look at our days on market. That's this graph here. Now I'll just leave it zoomed out just like we had with the 12 months average. We'll start there. You can see back in those crazy early 2000s, uh, 80, 90, 100, 110 days on market wasn't uncommon at all. That was a little bit of an extreme. I wish I could pull back another 20 years for you and show you, but uh, this is as far as it'll go. 
that all changed and then we got into what I would say is kind of more of a normal territory around here in the 30, 40 days on market average. Uh, and then it just kept getting more and more. So as of course we get into a more seller favored market, more buyers competing, they have to move faster and those days on market keeps shrinking. So then uh, with this year, basically starting at the beginning of this year, we were down 12, 11 days on market. We stayed that way through most of the year. Uh, again, this is our rolling, our rolling average that I'm on. And then right now we've shifted all the way up and we're at 13. Uh, <laughs> so um, that's not a very significant difference. Um, and I keep saying average, I apologize. It's median that we're looking at right here, um, but that's your median days on market. Let's switch back and look, you know, we'll zoom in here and maybe I'll give it three years. Let's see how we shifted. So August, we were at 15 and we're now at 22. So uh, if you're hearing in the news, homes are sitting on the market forever and this kind of talk, the reality is we went from 15 to 22. As a percentage, that is a big number, right? That's whatever that is, 35, 40%, I guess. Um, that is a big increase. But in reality, when you zoom out, we're still at such a low, low number, right? Let me give you this max again. I mean, this is the third... I believe we're tied for the third lowest October that we've had as far as I can go back. So is our days on market up? Uh, yeah, but we're still absurdly low. So uh, homes are still generally selling pretty quickly. My personal average days on market for my listings is typically around half of this number, um, even less. This number does get skewed up because you know I work mainly in the Twin Cities metro area, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the suburbs uh, within about an hour around it. This will include some of the more rural areas. So when they're further out, typically the days on the market is always a lot higher. This will also include things like uh, model homes. Those might sit on the market for six months or a year um, as they just sell one model and then all the other ones don't necessarily get listed. So uh, that number can get a little bit skewed. Hire a great agent and you're not going to be on the market typically for three weeks. Um, but it goes up. It goes up every year, just like you see here. Uh, this is very normal. Okay, I'm keeping this on the month to month change. So you can just see Every single winter, just like you would expect in Minnesota, we just got six inches of snow. Snow starts flying. Buyers are not wanting to go out and shop nearly as much. And so seasonality happens. We always see that number peak right around January. So we've still got uh, November, December, and January numbers to roll in. So what you'll see over the next few months is this number is going to keep going up. Perfectly normal. You can see, I mean, I'm showing you here every single year, it happens just this exact same way. If the market was completely shifting, this would be would be going up a lot more significantly. Third thing a lot of people are asking is if a home's listed for, you know, $400,000, how much is it selling for? It? That helps buyers to know uh, if the home's here, how much can I offer? And then if a seller's putting their house on the market, well, where should we price it so that we can, of course, get the most money, but I don't want to price it at 400 if it's going to sell for 300, right? So let's talk about that. Uh, very simply, I can switch to this percent of original price. That's what you're looking at here. Let's, uh, I'll start with the median. It's a little bit cleaner to see. And uh, let me see, let's, let's zoom back in. So this is, let's go to five years here. This is the five year graph. So obviously at 100% there, that's this median line here. If we list it for 400, it sells at 400 and that's at 100% line. You can see that we, through the, the peak months typically, okay, starting in March through August, uh, those homes are right around 100%, and then it drops in the winter. That's again why I say winter is a much more buyer favored time of year because they're going to be able to get that home for a lower percentage of the list price. And then we had the craziness happen of 2020. You can see right in here, we should have seen a big dip. There was no dip through the winter in 2020 because of the pandemic, everything was delayed into the second half of the year. And then because there was no dip, then everything just went crazy and kept going in 2021. That craziness also kept going into 2022. So you can see median 103%. That would mean on a $400,000 house, uh, that home is going to sell for about 412. Okay. Um, well over list. So we did see all that numbers and it actually came back to more normal territory um, sooner. Okay. So we, we would have been up. It did come down a little bit higher, a little bit came down lower more quickly. Um, but then it sat flat. August, September, and October at that 100%. If we switch to your average, I think this might be a better actual snapshot of what's going on in the market. Uh, so again, if we come in here, August 99.9, .9, September 98.9, October 98.3. So uh, not quite 2% under list price, $400,000 home. That's only $8,000 under list from what they originally priced the home at. So uh, 
it's not like there's some huge discount. You're not getting the home for tens of thousands of dollars under list price. In reality, um, we're currently at a fairly small dip under. I do absolutely expect that to continue to go down. Okay, again, as we get our November, December, January numbers, I think that is going to shift. If I pull out, this is still on your monthly number here. Um, we should be, you know, kind of following this trend line of the lower little valleys in here. Um, we are doing that. It is coming down more quickly. That's a very good thing. We want to keep that number coming down um, just a little bit. Now, people are always saying prices are dropping, prices are dropping. Again, that's true, but it's all about seasonality and it's super relative. So let's go to sales prices. Uh, and then after this, we're going to talk about what's happening next year. So don't bounce on me yet. Let's talk about your sale prices across the Twin Cities. They're high. Okay. I don't even care what these numbers are specifically. They're high. Okay. You can see um, we haven't come down at all. Let's switch that to the rolling number here. Uh, rolling number, have prices come down at all? Do you guys see some big dip? Is there some big, you know, plateau? Are we curving? Are we coming down? Not at all. We're still up seven and a half percent from this time last year over the last 12 months. If we pull this into, let me zoom in a little bit for us, five years. So we peaked at 380. We're currently at 355.5. So have sale prices come down? Yeah, <laughs> just like they do every single year. Um, let me zoom out a little bit more. You can see every single winter, the home prices are going to be the lowest because the, it's the most favored for buyers and it's the best time for just buying. Sellers are motivated. There's not a ton of buyers out there. So sellers are going to have to take less ideal terms. Um, and then every every summer it gets hopping. So we've seen that very normal. Was there technically a little bit less of a, a gentle bell curve and we kind of just peaked and came down? Yep, that's true. But we were also, I believe, up 14.1%. Uh, from January to June this year, which is really high. Um, I was saying before, I'd love to see that number come down considerably and only be up five, six, eight percent. Um, so the fact that we're at, if I switch back to my average, what was that? A seven and a half percent for the last 12 months so far. Um, it's not going to change too significantly because as we come out of the peak of this year, we're going to start going into the peak of next year with that rolling 12 months, you know? Um, and so we'll see where this, this ends up. Hopefully we're not in the double digits. Hopefully we stick down into the six, seven, eight percent, uh, would be fantastic. So what does six, seven, eight percent increase in sale prices mean? Well, it means we're about double of what we wouldn't expect to have. Historic average is something like three to 4% that, that home values go up every year. So we're still going to be, I mean, double that is pretty realistic. Basically, nobody said that prices are going down. We only see two, three, four, or five percent increases. That's going to feel like things have slowed down considerably. That will push things to being more of a buyer's market. It'll be a much easier market for people to buy and sell in. Rates are going to be a huge factor in that. Like you've heard, the last I saw, they're about 6.625, I believe, um, was kind of an average interest rate. Basically, nobody's saying interest rates are going to come down anytime soon, and I expect maybe they'll be around the same you know, high sixes, low sevens, mid sevens, something like that. That's my two cents. That's what's going on in the real estate market. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, we've got such a great loyal following, 1400 subscribers we're up to now. So if you have any questions, find all my info in the comments down below. You can book a console. You can go check out our brand new fancy website that we just got released last week. Um, and if you go over there, you can download the home buyer's guide and so much more. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you next time.